Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to another edition of At the Railroad. We bring the railroad to you. <laughs> we do love doing it, too. Uh, got a little project here. Well, I don't know how little it's going to be. Hopefully, it's going to be a little project. Anyway, I'll show you what's going on here. We are going to change a servo valve. This is the rebuilt one that I just got. Okay, it's not a new one. The new one's around $2,600. This one was uh, $1,200. And uh, the cover's going to come off. But what these servo valves do, I made a video, and this is really cool. Uh, three years ago, I changed the servo valve and uh, made a video of how to calibrate this once it gets put back on. It's got to have a mechanical uh, calibration plus an electrical calibration done to it. Okay. And what is really, really cool. And, and uh, th this is awesome. This is awesome. And this is the, what, what a great uh, thing these uh, videos are because I went back last night at home, watched that video and how to calibrate it. And uh, actually I surprised myself at the knowledge I had, but you know, I, I walked right through step by step, easy. So anybody in the future uh, comes out here and has to change one of these servo valves, all they got to do is go to that uh, video that I made. Uh, what what a great training thing is for whoever takes my place if they have to change a servo valve. You know, they can watch that ten minutes. They know exactly how to calibrate this, mechanical, and the electrical. Uh, the electrical has got to get done down in here. A couple cards you got to pull out, and then you've got to set this left bias right here. The only the only thing about that uh, last video, like I said that was over three years ago. I made that, but uh, you know that that's just incredible that uh, you know they don't have to call a guy from Kansas City to come out here, a technician to change the servo valve. All I got to do is watch my video. How about that? That's pretty cool. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I think that's wonderful. I'll show. I'll come up here and show you. Uh, the servo valves are right there in the center. The uh, left servo valve controls the lining of the track. The center one is the one we're going to change today. That controls this left jacking cylinder, which jacks the track up on the left. And the right one controls the right jacking cylinder. And what's going on here with the machine is when I go to my left grade rail reference, then this needle drops. That shows me the track surface in relation to the right rail for the left rail. Okay, it was just dropping out of sight, even though I was on level track. On level track, that needle should be in green, but it said it was dropping way out of sight. And then when I jacked the rail, clamped the rail, this needle would just go up and up and up and keep on going. It wouldn't stop. So that's no good. You end up with a track like this. <laughs> So we're going to change this servo. That was what was happening the last time. Uh, that center servo valve went bad and uh, said they're rebuilt. So I don't know. We'll see. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to change this valve. And uh, there's a link in this video's description for that uh, video on how to calibrate it. Okay. Hope you enjoyed today's show. This is really, really cool. All right. Okie dokie. Okay. 
got this loosened up. That's your electrical power supply. Just get that out of there. And uh, we'll see if we can get these loose. They're tight. Oh, wow. Let's see if that got it. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's going to take a little while to pull all them, to run all them out, but we got them broke loose now. Okay, we'll be right back. Thought I had that one broke loose. Guess I didn't. There goes my uh, Allen wrench. Wonderful. <coughs> well, I dropped the uh, Allen wrench down in the ballast. <sighs> Go figure. No surprise there. But I have crawled under the tamper and could not find it. And could not find it. And could not find it. So... Went and got a nice handy dandy little tool. Had to go back to shop. Didn't think to bring this up with me this morning. I'm gonna make sure I don't lose these. And one thing, I know you guys all got 6,700 tampers in your backyard when you're uh, doing this, when you're changing the servo valve, which, uh, eventually you're all going to have to do so pay attention boys and girls but when you're doing this you want to make sure this manifold's all clean before you take this off you don't want a bunch of dirt on there that might get down into that manifold I don't want it I want to come up off of there but Okay, I don't want to drop these bolts. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Clean that all off nice. Okay. It was pretty clean to start with. Okay, very good. At least if I drop this wrench, I'll be able to find it a lot easier. Okay. that off and uh, put the new one back down on there so this four o-rings that's got to be in to it. OK. 
Okay. Get that guy started. Wonderful. We'll get it a little bit snug. Get the other one started. Okay. I got the uh, got the mecha about mechanical and the electrical bias set on that. And this is the moment of truth. Gonna turn our 28 volt power on. And uh, so we'll see what happens to this needle. Hopefully it stays fairly close in there. We'll see when I flip this switch over. Well, that's good. That's real good. Because before it was just dropping. So. here a little bit and then we're going to try to tamp we're in the siding here so okay wonderful 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 well I did have a problem up there on that center servo valve uh, it had an oil leak in it so um, I had to shut everything down and uh, out there there was an o-ring that had broken so I had to take it off again and uh, I had another o-ring I put it on there and I got it tightened down nice and tight and I've been uh, I've been clamping here and uh, I have no oil leaks so that's good Cross lever on the track's good. All right. No oil leaks. Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, We'll lock that up. Very good. Okay. Well, I did want to tell you I found my Allen wrench. I'd search and search with this magnet in the ballast. It wasn't in the ballast. It was in the uh, <laughs> on the, the front of the jack beam. I didn't look there. I looked on the back of the jack beam, so I found that. But, uh, that's my track inspection gauge that I use to check the cross level on the track. I made a video on the track inspection gauge there uh, for another probably three years ago, two and a half years ago. So there's a link in uh, this video's description to go watch about the track inspection gauge. All right, I got a train coming, so. Uh, I'm going to have to sit here in the siding, wait for him to get by, and then I'll go out and do a little bit of tamping. So I think that's going to do it for uh, do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, really appreciate you helping me change that servo valve. And uh, have a really good day. Okay? Happy rails to you, my friend, until we meet again. Well, while we're at it, I had another problem, found another problem. You see that light out there on the light carriage? I can raise it up here. So that varies the amount of track the lift I want to put on the track. The higher that light goes, the higher I will pick the track up. And when I pick that light up out there, then this needle should drop. So we're going to pick this up. And while I'm doing this, that light out there is going up in the air and you see how the needle has dropped okay so now I'm gonna pick that light up out up there up and that needle should come up okay so that's at my zero point and I'm going to take it even higher 
And the, so what's happening is, let me show you this. Go back down here. Okay. What's happening is that light is going into this receiver through that mask. Some people called it a, a shadow board. But uh, you can see, I don't know if we'll be able to see down that hole or not. Yeah. See the light in the center hole? We're at zero. That's right where it should be. But anyway, that needle was not following my light so what I did I, this is a receiver and uh, I know you're not gonna be able to see if I show you in there now you won't be able to see but, well maybe you can there's a uh, photo cells in there and uh, sometimes they go bad and sometimes things just goof up it's electrical anyway I swapped receivers I took the good receiver that I had that was over here and I put that's the good receiver that was over there and it's following the light so now I got a bad receiver all right so I'm gonna have to get a receiver and they used to sell as rebuild kits I've rebuilt many of these they go bad uh, it happens but now Parshko wants to rebuild them, and you see this, exchange only. So, I'm going to have to get a receiver. I can't get a rebuild kit anymore. Go figure. Anyway, there you go. So, that's, uh, <laughs> at least I got that part figured out, and I can still go out and tamp. I'll just, depending if I'm going to do a left-hand curve, then I'll have to have the receiver on this side. If I uh, do a right hand curve, then I'll have to take that receiver off of here, put it over here, get it lined up again, and uh, work off of this side for a right hand curve. Tangent I could do even one, but usually like here, we got a tangent going into a left hand curve, so I'll run the tangent on the left side, so I don't have to flop over up there. All right, so we got that problem solved. Now we're going to wait on parts to get this. Okay. <laughs> At least I got that figured out. But that's railroad. That's tampering. Tampers are high maintenance machines. As you can imagine. Okay. Train will be here in about uh, 15 minutes. So I'm going to follow him down and then just tamper.